Well, Steamer Joe here. I'm I'm setting up to drill and ream the hole through the the clevis in the piston valve. The that's what will drive the banjo is what will drive that valve. So it'll have a bronze bushing that fits into the slot. And I'm just I'm setting it up to make sure that the the slot is perpendicular to the spindle of the mill. And I've got a precision angle adjust in adjuster that I can use by tramming in this piece of tool steel. I just have the vise gently snugged up. Maybe snug it just slightly more. Got it, finally. So I'm going to go ahead and drill and ream that pinhole, 3 16 diameter. And, uh, till later. Now I'm ready to get positioned to drill that hole. I'm going to set the x axis zero first. I'll set over 250,000. That shaft is precisely half inch diameter. Lock the wire axis. Now x axis is zero. And the hole is positioned. Two inches, seven hundred thousand in the end, and this hole is the datum for all of the other dimensions on the valve, which is why I'm putting it in there first. So there's two point seven inches. Come back when I'm ready to drill. Drill and ream that pinhole.
You know, one of the reasons, just happened to think about it, that I used the little Atlas horizontal mill as much as I do, is this mill head has only four spindle speeds. The lowest speed is 420 RPM. So if you're using any kind of uh, wheel cutters or larger diameter cutters on hard materials, uh, it's really not suited. So the, the little mill comes in uh, slick for that. I think I will slow this down as far as it'll go. 420 RPM to ruin this. Operation complete. Till later. All right. Here's the setup I've <coughs> come up with to machine the steps on the piston. Uh, of course, I laid it out, and I've got uh, precise scribe marks for where they belong, so I can double check my dimensions. But uh, I'm going to go in and define those positions with this cutoff type tool. And then I've got a right hand tool. And a left hand tool. I uh, ground the high speed steel and then I honed it very carefully, uh, finished with a hard Arkansas stone. So they're razor sharp. I've got them set precisely on center. Oh, there's the... In an earlier video I talked about using the shaper to cut the bottoms of these off so I can... So, I had to take about a hundred thousandths off of these. The shaper worked perfect for that. But anyway, I'm going to use that little cutoff type tool. Carefully mark the position of each of the steps. And uh, then go in and cut it. But I want to pay close attention, so I'll uh, come back after I get them marked. Well, I'm set up to cut that first one. I'm going to only go in... Uh, I'm going to stay about 30. Well, you can't see the shaft. Well, you can't see anything. Holy cow. Well. <laughs> there it is. And I'm going to... I'm not going to film the removing that excess material in there. I'll come back and show you the valve when it's complete. Well, there's a shot of the valve before I clean it up and uh, remove it from the lathe. The these diameters are already fixed. That, that shaft was 499 and a half thousandths. And I don't want to remove any of that because I've got it sized to fit the head, the port in the head perfectly. So, But I've got to make sure there's no burrs on it, and yet I want to keep sharp edges on those valves. So what I'm going to use very carefully is a file. I use a lot of files, and I guess just as an aside here, this is a, a wonderful file. This is a Valerby file. It's a Swiss designation of cut four. The higher the numbers, the finer the file. This one's very fine. It's flat. It's sharp. Uh, great file. So anyway, 
I'm just going to gently rub this file across those surfaces, keeping them flat, and uh, then take it out of the lathe. Oh, while the camera's here, I thought some of you might appreciate. I just, a few months ago, got this ER25 collet, and I know it looks funny hanging out of the lathe, but it works well there, and it's a, I have to adapt it to fit in the headstock, but it's a number two taper, so it'll fit in my mill head and the tailstock, and with the adapter in the headstock. But I was always fumbling for the collet, so let me zoom in here a little bit. Maybe you can see it's upside down, but that's all the uh, information about the wattages and power ratings of the uh, computer power supply. Uh, so I use that box. It makes it a handy way to hold the collets. So <laughs> I'll get the valve cleaned up and we'll look at it after it's ready to go.